This is your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Thursday, November 11. Police are continuing investigations into a murder that occurred at 2nd Avenue Weeksland St. Michael this morning. Lawman said the victim, 29-year-old Mario Hines of Richmond St. Michael, was found with injuries about his body in a trap. Assistant Superintendent of Police Dale Critchlow spoke to reporters at the scene. As a result of a report made to Black Rock Police Station, personnel came to Vietslang Golan, St. Michael, and discovered an unidentified male. Police are, con are presently conducting investigations. Anyone who has information that can assist with this matter is asked to contact the, pers the police emergency number at 211. Black Rock Police Station at 417-7500 or 01 or any other police station. In other news, as the government meets with stakeholders in the healthcare sector to get its rollout of safe zones right, the president of the Barbados Dental Association, Dr. Vidya Armagan, today outlined a detailed plan to allow private sector entities to establish their own safe zones. To enter our safe zones, the businesses will have certain, uh, there's be certain requirements. So we're requiring, if you're in our safe zones, the businesses will have to have a security personnel at the gate or the entrance. They'll do like what they're doing right now. So we're not subverting the government initiatives all of those stay in place. What the government has in place for sanitization and temperature checking and their health care codes in the kitchens and all that, those are all in place. We're not changing any of that. Those are excellent standards and we're adhering to those. We're just adding guidelines on top of that. So we're saying as you enter any of these safe zones, there's a security personnel and they're going to have several functions. They're going to do the sanitization, they're going to do the uh, temperature check, but they're also going to check your vaccine status at that point. Are you vaccinated, unvaxxed, or do you need to be tested to enter the facility? Um, there are also, there's also going to be a requirement in our safe zones that you wear a medical mask. He disclosed that a website, barbadasafezones.com, has already been launched and that local boutique hotel, the Sweetfield Manor, and a restaurant both located in the upper garrison area of the Bridgetown UNESCO Historic Area will be the first to sign on to the private safe zone policy. Dr. Armagan added that a restaurant and the Caribbean Smile Makers Dental Clinic, both located at Belleville St. Michael, will also be coming on stream. He told reporters that the safe zones are needed to get businesses up and running as he outlined how it will operate. So certainly in an outdoor environment like this, we would have some minimum requirements like tables six feet apart with people seated at them. A lot of the protocols right now, unfortunately, people are saying, oh, you need to have tables six feet apart. But then when you put someone in this chair and this chair, they're actually four feet apart. And with Delta, when I'm on mass drinking, chatting in a restaurant with a lot of noise and I'm speaking loudly, the aerosols I'm creating can spread in that distance. So we know that six feet is better. So one of the requirements would be in an outdoor space, you'd have to be six feet apart. In an indoor space, like an air-conditioned restaurant, store, or whatever, we're also going to insist that you have HEPA filtration or UVC lights in your filtration system. So if you want to be part of our zone, the business as a minimum requirement will have to put those things in place. On the consumer side now, so on the flip side, the person entering our safe zone, they'll stop at security, get their temperature done, uh, get sanitized. They're going to present their vaccine status to enter the zone. So they're going to have to say whether they're vaccinated or if they're unvaccinated, show a negative PCR test or take a test at the gate. If someone is coming into the zone and they have symptoms, whether vaccinated or not, they will be subjected to a test because the idea is as you know, even if you're vaccinated, you could potentially be carrying the virus. We understand that. We do understand, though, that if you're vaccinated, the chance of you spreading the virus is far less. We understand that you, the period of time that you spread the virus is five days versus 10 to 14 days. And we understand that the kind of virus you're spreading is not as horrible as in an unvaccinated case. So we understand there's, this, there's a lot of benefit to being vaccinated. However, if a vaccinated person presents with symptoms, they will be tested or they will not be allowed entry to the safe zone. A leading tourism official in Jamaica suggests Barbados may need to try a new approach to boost vaccinations in the sector. Last month, Italians in Barbados reported that travelers were canceling bookings to Bridgetown due to the less than ideal national vaccination rate. 
Jamaica has welcomed over 1 million tourists to the country up to the end of October this year. And President of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourism Association, Clifton Reader, told Barbados today, countries must learn from each other. We've learned a lot from Barbados, especially the other prolific beasts. I mean, a leader of the 21st century. We listen to her all the time and we've been right. But again, as people of this region, I believe we need to come together as one. Well. So when we develop, like when we develop the Caribbean Jamaica, that should have been replicated throughout the Caribbean as a good standard to go by. Barbados, you've developed some good things as well that Jamaica could learn from as well. But one of the things that I think that we should learn is engagement how management engage the staff. It's not about putting in policies to get staff out of work, but it's about convincing staff, giving them the information they need to make the right decision. I mean, some people use the big sledgehammer and they say, okay, if you don't get vaccinated, no. Most hotels in Jamaica were encouraged through sponsorship by MOT and TEF to develop programs where they could bring in professionals, doctors, movie stars, local singers and artists to talk to the staff, influencers. But I can tell you one of the lessons as well that I certainly learned is that you have within the workplace your own influencers. Mm -hmm. So when we brought the, the vaccination, team to this ballroom and my supervisor from the buffet line, big guy, he came around and he got his thing and nothing happened, right? People were like, what? I can go do it too, right? And the domino effect started and that's why in Jamaica we are able now to boast that within the hotel we are at 60 and I think Barbados and other islands can follow suit and we're willing to share the information gathered throughout the time with other nations. Health authorities confirm 300 new COVID-19 cases, 145 males and 155 females from 1,910 tests conducted by the Best Santos Public Health Laboratory on Wednesday. There are 937 people in isolation facilities and 6,522 in home isolation. Two deaths were recorded on Wednesday to Barbadian males ages 84 and 80 years who died at the Blackman Gallup and the Harrison Point isolation facility respectively. They were both unvaccinated. Total deaths stand at 189. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news in the Bahamas, autopsy results confirmed that the death of four-year-old Bella Walker was caused by blunt force trauma about her body. This has sparked even more outrage and calls for stiff penalties for those responsible. We get the details in this Eyewitness News report. Doctors are crying being echoed nationwide following the death of baby Bella Walker. When one of us hurt, all of us hurt. We are all very impacted by this. People said, oh, we must protect our little girl. We must also protect our little boy. Our 
children are our future. Find the cause of that being confirmed in a police report as blood force trauma causing multiple fractures. The Minister of National Security Marine Manu was asserting that the information was revealed in an autopsy. Based on the information coming to me, I have received no information of sexual assault. Manu says the allegations of rape are simply rumors, adding that the payment should be just as irate that the toddler was beaten to death. Now, somebody obviously has um, an offered an opinion. If you have a physical injury, it's a to have a young girl. Uh, to me, that's enough. To me, that's sufficient to be young. Commissioner of Police Paul Rule also revealing the extent to which Bella was injured and encourages parents to pay special attention to their children. I don't know if they're thinking, but see the extent of the injuries, the family injuries caused by the over force that was uh, When your children come to you and get it, don't just dismiss it. Don't just tell them, you know, shut up, you're lying. But look into it what is right, because at the end of the day, we don't need another one of our to be injured. The group of protesters gathered outside the magistrate's court today demanding that there be amendments to the Child Protection Act and they made clear that their work will not cease until justice is served. I will move that child until social service come in a check of what is going on. All perverters, those that are mentally sick in the head, those that feel it necessary to prey on what it means from children to adults. We will fight you. We will stand against you what we are starting now. The man and woman remain in custody in connection to the death of the toddler and they are expected to be arraigned in court this week. On the international scene, inflation, the pandemic and a lack of investment in social programs has led to an increasing number of Brazilians going hungry. More in this report from Al Jazeera Television. Marisa Barbosa has been walking these streets of Rio de Janeiro for the past three decades. She works for the NGO Citizenship Action, distributing food for the needy. This alleyway is not the place where one would expect to find hunger. But since 2014, the number of hungry in Brazil has doubled, from 9 million to 19 million people. That's the equivalent of the entire population of Chile or Romania. Mariusa tells us that behind every door she finds a desperate family. Since Elisette, lost her job during the pandemic. In November, the government suspended the emergency aid. She doesn't know how she'll feed her four children and the fifth one she's expecting. <gasps> The family receives a $65 monthly check from the government's social program, Bolsa Familia. But it's worth nothing. Inflation this year is more than 10 percent, and food prices have tripled. Many Brazilians living in poor neighborhoods like this one now depend solely on donations to put food on the table. But families, like Karinas, face an additional problem. They don't even have the means to cook it. One third of what Karina receives from the government's social program pays for the gas. None of her neighbors can afford using a regular oven. They've resorted to bricks and alcohol to cook their meals. But the worst days are the ones towards the end of the month, when you have nothing to cook and you must tell your children to go to bed early, on an empty stomach, because sleep will make the hunger go away. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.